Hey guys. All right, I know it's been a while. Uh, I'm just pulling apart Scrappy. So I've been gone traveling for about a month straight. I haven't been anywhere around, have no time to do any videos. So I'm sorry about that. We are gonna put one together right now. We're gonna go over <laughs> the time we got surprised doing some of the prop testing when we drug the pickup truck across the ground. Some of the flights, slow flights, just uh, a whole bunch of things that I missed over the last several months of footage. Um, we had a couple issues come up. One of the guys that helps do the videos got really, really sick and was out for the, nearly the entire month before Oshkosh. On top of that, the month before Oshkosh, I actually started, and this is exciting news, I have good news and bad news. The exciting good news is I started another aircraft project. Hallelujah. Between finishing Scrappy, starting another build, and filming that build, I've um, tackled a bit more and I've never been busier in my life. Um, this last month has been mostly traveling around for my other businesses. For those of you who don't know, grip lock ties, we do rubber line zip ties, that's a, still a focus of mine I do with Crate and King. Best tugs, we manufacture aircraft moving tugs, that takes a lot of my time. These are my day jobs. Uh, EcoVap, I produce giant structured towers that evap rapid evaporate water for all industries around the globe, from mining to oil and gas, uh, all kinds of water processes. And if you can find a cure to the problem, you can have a business. And that business takes a huge portion of every day and weekends. As I'm currently developing something really exciting, I'm going after taking produced or toxic water from various industries, and I believe I have a path to bring it back as pure drinking water, as well as trying to bring fresh drinking water into third world countries where they only have toxic water. So that is taking a ton of my time. So that is what I do during the day as those other businesses. There's one other that's on the military side I never get to talk about. This was classified above top secret. Those are my day jobs. Aviation, these videos with all of you, which is my passion, this is the love of my life is my family and then aviation. The bad news is, if you've already haven't noticed, these videos are going to be few and far between. What are you, what are you guys talking about? Uh, I am not gonna stop though, I will keep doing it. But right now I am filming footage or videoing, I say film, we don't use film anymore. <laughs> I'm doing lots of videos of a new aviation related project. I can't show it to you until it's near done. You guys can't do this, please. However, I will occasionally when I can, and I have no idea when that will be. I might do one once a month, every three months or two back to back, I have no idea. I will continue to do videos. I have to get scrappy in the dirt. It has not been in the dirt yet. Right now I'm pulling it down to give it basically an annual after getting back from Oshkosh. I only had time to go buzz it around the pattern, clear the cobweb webs off between traveling all over the country for my regular job, and uh, Scrappy has not gone out to play. So we're gutting it. It's not gonna be fun, so we won't have a video on that, but we're gonna gut it, give it an annual inspection, go through everything. It worked great, it flew great. I couldn't be happier with the results. So this video is about all that missing stuff I never got out. I hope you guys like it. So for now, uh, I hope you like this video. I'm gonna get Scrappy up in the dirt. Get, I need to make the motorcycle brackets to get motorcycles on it. Go out and play with it. I will continue to do the videos randomly throughout. Also, there are a few other things that come, came up that I'm really excited about in the last couple of months, which also pulled me away from being able to produce these. But I have three very large companies at some point. Um, you will hear about them. Uh, one in aerospace, two in aviation only, just the aviation side. I will likely do two potentially three of those projects, but likely two, and one has already begun. Um, and they're super exciting, and I'm really happy that I was asked to participate. So at some point, I hope to show you what that is all about, but it is also gonna take a bit more of my time. So I gotta find a way to make a time machine, because <laughs> I need about, oh, two or 400 more hours in a week and uh, some more time with my family. So I love all of you. Thank you for following along. Thank you for being part of this scrappy journey. And I hope that you'll ring the bell, whatever you need to do, so that when those videos start coming out again, you'll join me along the way. I love you, appreciate you. 
Let your family know you love them. Let the people you work with know you love them. Let the strangers that you've never met in passing, give them a smile so that they know they are loved. This world needs a lot more happy people in it. So do your part to share it. I love you guys. You know the drill. Let's get back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys. So, see, I have just emptied several rolls of tape, my favorite product when working with carbon fiber. I've got to make these custom air blends between the bigger wing and fuselage, and I kind of wanted to give it some shape, like the, I don't know, like birds, they have that little hump. And so that's the kind of design we did. Uh, I told my son, Dylan, how to do it, and then he did it, and all I've done is a teeny bit of tape touch-up, but I'd say he did 99% of it, and I love the way it looked. So at this point, I'm gonna lay a couple layers of carbon fiber down, and then I'm gonna put micro on it that I can sand and get the perfect shape I want, fine tuned, and then I can pull a part off of that that will not have the extra weight. So carbon fiber, micro, tomorrow it will be dry, we'll sand it, pull some parts off it, you know the drill, back to work. It always starts out ugly, but it'll be beautiful. Today's arms day at the gym of Katie Hanger. <laughs> ah, I gotta get my mask back on and get back to work. Not one of the easier places to make a a mold, but it's working. We did our first layer, micro, shaped it, sanded it. Now we're laying up on top of it to pull part off. Then we'll pop the whole part off, trim nice clean lines, clear coat it up so it's got a black trim that matches the black that goes around the outside of the silver wing. So that's the plan, that's work. <laughs> All right, there's our piece. It's kind of crazy looking. Should just snap right on the front and drag to the back. There it goes. Like it, love. <laughs> back to work. Another day of testing. Still dark. Um, we're meeting up here at 4.30 in the morning every day. We got hours and hours before anybody shows up. So. Um, I can't fly it in the dark right now. It still has to be uh, daylight, so we'll get everything prepped, ready, fueled, and then uh, probably about five o'clock-ish, uh, we're gonna be able to just go up and down the runway, hover at five feet, do several hours of it. Um, this is the ritual, every day. <laughs> There's a lot of you that have asked if you could all come down to the airport during the flight test phase and uh, be here, be a part of it. And I used to allow that um, years back. And, and then I realized that I started to get a bigger, bigger crowd. And at one point I had, I don't know, 60, 70 people uh, around one of my race planes during its initial flight test phase. 
and I started to get nervous and worrying about all the people that are watching, all the cameras, um, everyone zoomed in, telephoto lens, and I'm sitting here trying to focus on flying the plane and what might go wrong and the problems that come about. And it just really sunk in at what I learned even before that part of test flying planes. Um, and I didn't mind it so much when it was just five, 10 people, some safety people, fire extinguishers, um, and my brother and closest family and friends that, that I entrusted that were there for my safety. But when it got to where there was 50, 60, 70 people there for a flight test, um, it added a whole nother element of actual risk because my mind was focused on the cameras, what they might film, if I do something wrong, if I zigzag on my first landing because maybe there's an alignment wrong on, a, on a, um, setting my, my axles on my legacy, being perfectly straight or whatever it is, a braking problem. And that's not where your head needs to be. And so this is now my new ritual of all flight testing phases. It's either early in the morning like this, no one around, only people I need for safety, and the anxiety goes down. And in talking to other people to do flight tests, um, you start to realize that's actually becomes protocol. For a lot of people, they won't fly with anybody other than their staff for safety. And I started to adapt that. And quite frankly, it just, dropping back down to a handful of the people I need in case something goes wrong became my only way to do it. So we're at the airport continuing testing the aircraft. We're gonna go out and just do a whole bunch more floats down the runway, um, faster, slower, faster landing, slower landing. It's just repetitive on and off the ground because that's one of the critical phases of flight. We know the plane's flying well, um, but now it's all about practicing without getting more than a few feet off the ground. So for all of you who have asked, um, sorry I don't allow uh, big groups anymore, but um, there will be a point. This will be flying regularly, going to Oshkosh. Uh, if everything continues as it is, we'll have plenty of hours and uh, everything checked off the box. And uh, at that point, we'll get to where it's okay. Uh, I hope I'll be flying with a whole bunch of you in the back country, as long as everything continues as it is. Um, this plane will be out and about all around the country real soon. Let's get back to work. <laughs> and it kept wanting to fly. Never flown so much. Yeah, no. 
know, I'm a little late. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> fun. <laughs> <laughs> just finished a uh, handful of hours this morning doing more test flying with Scrappy and I couldn't be happier. I'm, I've got enough time in now and enough early mornings that I'm really feeling comfortable. Um, getting slower and slower, um, just over the runway, low level. I'm excited because this is the first time I've got it sub 30 in ground effect over the runway and, and I have my plane set up on knots. So I'm sub, sub 30 knots before I touch down. And um, <clears throat> what's really amazing about that, which just blows my mind, it flies so much slower than Draco ever did with this new wing design, is that I touch down sub 30 flat, not on the backside of the curve. On Draco, uh, I didn't get onto the backside of the curve till I was over 100 and some odd hours. Just because you fly off the required hours in test flying doesn't mean you're done testing. So uh, that's just the minimum to, to get comfortable. So I've been living inches off the runway. There's a lot of people flying right now. I'm keeping the plane kind of out of sight, out of mind. When it quiets down this evening, I'll have time to have done any little adjustments I want. We'll fire it back up and go till dark. So you guys know the drill, that's work. All right guys, we just finished a pull test. Kind of get an idea of how much thrust we can pull off a three bladed prop that's actually designed for top end only. This is part of the testing phase I've done for Scrappy, adjusting the different pitches on the big fat blades from an airboat to see on a similar engine, how much thrust difference is there? And is it worth chasing something to grab that bottom end while still being able to go fast? So being a completely different prop, but almost the same motor, this is the only eight cylinder 720 cubic inch Lycoming motor in a legacy. So this is really close. This was Mark's race plane. So this is my partner, Troy, who's holding the camera here. And Mark and I built two identical planes with the exception of, I did a 780 cubic inch custom that's now in Scrappy. So we have to adjust for about 60 cubic inches. It's roughly eight to 9% difference. But this three bladed prop built for top end is stalling at the bottom end. The max thrust we pulled out here, it's probably density altitude of about 7,200 right now. Um, so we're really back end on the power from what it would make at sea level. But at this density altitude today, which is similar temperature that I was doing on Scrappy's pull tests, we're pulling 720 pounds of static thrust. 720. Now I know some big long blade, two bladed props that are pushing in near 600 range in a four cylinder cub, but that is built for acceleration. What I wanna do is find if there's something we can do to get the bottom end thrust of what Scrappy's boat prop can do, which is staggering.
This is stalling on, on launch, so it takes a lot of runway before we get clean air into the blades, and then the blades are cutting clean air every time, and then it can get up and move. This plane right here does nearly 280 knot cruise, normally aspirated. Yeah! <laughs> so it's built for the top end. So what is the prop that's on this now? This is a whirlwind race propeller. This was built specifically to go after some of the world records that this aircraft has set. And I love their props. And it absolutely worked amazing at the top end that it's designed for. So me telling you the difference between this prop and an airboat prop has nothing to do with, with anything other than how much difference thrust you can get from that zero to 30 on one style prop for another, and I'm trying to get Scrappy to do a combination of low end launch, zero to 30, how fast can we do it? And can we do 160 miles an hour, 170 miles an hour? And how do you build that prop? So we're gonna keep playing step one out of the way, but I love this whirlwind prop. Perfect for top end where it was made. Kind of gives you a comparison. Scrappy is significantly higher thrust at the bottom, horrible at the top. We have some work to do. Let's learn some more. Back to work. Dude, dude, we oh, need a bigger truck. truck. You're pulling my truck across <laughs> the bay. <laughs> like 10 feet. <laughs> okay, dude, you gotta see the track marks, okay? Is your part break on? Yeah. Holy crap, it's both tires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we can pitch, uh, get the prop to pitch like that for takeoff. <laughs> I knew I was dragging it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's way too funny. Well, look, they're brand new tires. <laughs> yeah, we need a bigger truck. <laughs> Those are some brand new treads. Sorry about that, Ron. You got a flat spot. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm gonna grab a drink. Next stop, I'll get a bite to eat on the way to Oshkosh. your airplane we're glad you brought it here you worked real hard and did your best you really persevered hundreds of hours reading plans you finally get to fly you paid for gas and tested your plane and now you own the sky you planned your flight to oshkosh you flew to the next to fist you rocked your wings and turned to base and landed on the disc Rock off. loud cheer All right, guys, Oshkosh is done. Scrappy's got the chicken box or something, but this is super cool. Done. I haven't flown it since I got back from Oshkosh. I'm just absolutely buried. Haven't had time to do any videos, anything other than my real job, my real work. I kind of set the world aside as I worked on Scrappy and Oshkosh. So I don't know when the next time I'll fly it or get to get caught up on any of that stuff, but 
This is so cool. It's all dotted up. We're 3D scanning Scrappy as built. We're gonna model that up, get it in the computer. There's all kinds of fun things we can do with that. There's lots of things I wanna do. If any of you noticed, the wing tip on Scrappy is not any style of conventional tip. It's just a straight edge to give a baseline for all kinds of testing I wanna do for ultimately what Scrappy's wing tips will be. Uh, but I needed the airplane model for various reasons, so we're working on it now. Take an entire day to get done. Let's get back to work. This is gonna wrap up this video right here. I didn't get to fly Scrappy, <laughs> only in town for a couple of days. We did, however, just pull Scrappy back in from doing an engine run after getting the oil change. It's the third oil change I'm in since I got Scrappy finished. It's uh, been flying a couple months now, but uh, I didn't get to fly it this week. Dang it, <laughs> I gotta leave town for a couple more weeks for work. However, the couple days I was in town, we did get it all the way pulled apart. Every inspection opened up, the whole thing decaled, oil change, went through everything, and so far, everything looks awesome. The only thing I did is threw on a couple more grip lock ties, maybe just because I wanted to have something to do, and you can never have too many grip lock ties. My goal now is to just have it completely ready to go fly when I get back in a few more weeks. So uh, I hope to see you guys soon. My next project on this, since Scrappy has still, after a couple months of flying, not seen dirt yet, uh, I wanna get some brackets made up, hang some motorcycles from this thing, and go find the back country and actually take this out and have some more fun with it. So I hope you join me. We'll see you soon, might be a little while, but I hope you come back and follow along. You know the drill, <laughs> back to work. I hope you liked that video. I hope to see you guys really soon. I appreciate it. Also, I can't wait to get the controller in so that I can back off the timing when I hit nitrous. We haven't had a chance to do nitrous yet and really see what this thing can do on a launch and a short takeoff. So that will come later, probably after I get the motorcycles hanging from the wing, getting the back country. So who knows when, but we will get to it. Thanks for following along. We'll see you soon. Back to work.